Hi, I'm Amelia from the Ozone, and I'm here to help you green your home. So come on over here. So here at the Ozone, we offer several different recycling programs, and one of them is a food scrap recycling program. So we believe that recycling your food scraps is really important for sustainability because in the landfill, the food scraps take up 22%, which is the largest proponent of the landfill. And when food scraps enter the landfill, they anaerobically digest, which produces methane gas, which is a greenhouse gas 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. So as a as we combat climate change, this is a really important step that we can take um, in taking our food scraps and keeping it out of the garbage can. So one way we do that is by composting. And we do that through several ways. Here in our community, here in Red Hook, we have a drop-off point. So families, we have over 75 families here right in Red Hook and then, or 50 families here in Red Hook and over 100 in Rhinebeck who drop off in several drop off locations. Wally Farms has their own drop off location at the West Deconic Diner as well as at their clubhouse. So we have the drop off, which people take from their home compost, their countertop, and they come over every week and they dump their food scraps here. We then take these food scraps and get them processed into beautiful, rich soil or compost, which we add as a soil amendment. And you can see Becky is going to walk you over to the compost pile. <laughs> Pad Thai is going to join. He loves compost. <laughs> Sometimes he sees bits of remnants of food, but not really. And you can see this beautiful, rich compost is what we have. And this is, contains all of the food scraps. Last year, we composted over 20 tons of food scraps from our community. And it's all within the compost here, which was processed by Ulster County Resource Recovery Agency. So instead of bringing it into the landfill, we're taking this beautiful soil amendment that is so nutrient rich and putting it back into the soil. Here we are on Greg Farm and this compost is going to be beneficial not only to our home gardens, but to our agricultural community here in the Hudson Valley. So when it comes to home composting, many people get overwhelmed or feel like they're failing. And I hear many times people say, well, I tried it at home, but it didn't work out. And I always like to remind people that, oh, we have somebody coming over here. To <laughs> I always like to remind people that you can make composting as easy or as complicated as you want to make it. Composting can involve taking every plate of food and throwing it into a pile in the woods away from your home. It could involve digging a hole and putting it underground. Or it can involve more of like a tumbler or pallets that people use to form a nice three-tiered collection system. There are many, many ways that you can compost at home and it can be simple or more complicated. Um, so the best way to do it at home, I believe would be, there's no best way, but what I recommend is not to include the dairy or the meat necessarily, because many people are also very scared of animals coming and being attracted, like Pad Thai who goes into compost piles day in and day out. <laughs> So to you know, keep it from being dog food or raccoon food or any of the other animals, bears, food, um, you know, minimizing the meat and the dairy is a good idea. Um, we at our program, because we're doing a commercial size composting system, we do take meat and dairy, which makes it a little easier. But um, that's a good that's a good step. You also want to make sure when you're home composting that you put it in a location where it gets some sunlight and that you're measuring the, the temperature, or sorry, the, the moisture level. You wanna make sure that the pile stays moist and not bone dry or sopping wet in the summer, day, summer months. So we wanna think about the sunlight, we wanna think about moisture, making sure it's a nice moist pile, and we also wanna make sure that it's a good temperature. Now, 
a cold compost isn't processing as fast and it's not really working, but it's still going to biodegrade over some time. It's just not going to be done in like this 30 to 90 day period that some people can get work to do. So, um, but so if you're, you're to get a hot compost, you want to make sure you have the right ratio of carbons to nitrogens or browns to greens. So your browns are your carbon sources. And those are things like brown dead leaves, brown wood chips, and um, things like that. Your greens are your nitrogen, high nitrogen elements. So that's your food scraps, maybe some live twigs and green um, uh, leaves, things that are not dead. Those are your nitrogen. So when you're adding that, those both to your pile, every time you throw your food in, you wanna add three to six times the amount of browns every time. And I think that's a step that gets missed most often. So you wanna add three times. So if you add one bin of food scraps, you wanna add three to six bins of carbon. And that's how you wanna get a really nice uh, consistency and that'll activate. And in terms of activation, some people think by throwing, you know, a, a dead mouse in your pile will do a good, <laughs> will be add a trick, you know, to make it really hot. So that might be, um, helpful if you have those lying around. <laughs> My favorite design for home compost is using free pallets that I find at like a Adway's or Williams Lumber. You could take three to five pallets and you want to make sure they're matching and pretty and they're like in good shape and you can um, you know use some L brackets and put them together, screw them together, um, stake them into the ground if you need on a few sides and um, they serve, you can, they're access, they're easy access from the front for turning the piles. Um, and usually what I do is I fill one, you have your, your um, what's the word when you have the three tiers or the three sections. So you fill one section um, and then you let it sit. You want you, you turn it, then you let it sit. Then you move on to your, the, your next tier, your next section, and you start working on that. And then you'll have, you can have, two and three depending on how many people are in your family and how much food you're you're uh, producing but it's a totally doable thing and if you live in an apartment or a uh, residential community where you don't have um, much green space to do your own composting look into programs like the ozones where you can drop off all your food scraps here or we also do a residential or commercial pickup service so that people who are unable to compost at home have an option and they have an, a way to do it. So if you have any questions, the Ozone is here. We're here in Red Hook. Uh, we're a sustainability center. We offer lots of consultation and um, sustainable options to help you live a sustainable lifestyle. And I'm available anytime to answer questions for you. And um, I just want to make it easy for us all to compost and take part in these, uh, these measures. So thank you very much. I hope you have a great weekend. And I'll see you next Friday for Green Your Home with the Ozone.